What scientific evidence do creationists have to refute evolution? The answer is very simple. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. There isn't any. Now, they often say that they have evidence against evolution, but when one looks very carefully at that so-called evidence, one either finds that it is an outright misrepresentation, or it's not evidence at all. It is simply an unsolved problem or a missing piece of evidence that, ev that the biologists or other scientists have failed to find. They often, for example, cite fossils that are supposedly missing from the fossil record as evidence against evolution. But there's an old saying in science, and that saying is that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And putting it very simply, the, the fact that you haven't found something yet doesn't mean you never will. The fact that you cannot explain something at this point doesn't mean that your theory of explanation is entirely wrong. In reality, there are many, many unsolved problems in evolution, just as there are unsolved problems in organic chemistry, in physics, and in astrobiology. But the important point is whether or not any contradictory evidence, that evidence that really says that evolution is wrong has ever emerged. And the answer to that is not a single thing. And that's the important point to make and to understand. One of the things that people often misunderstand about science is they think that a scientist makes their career by producing evidence that supports established theories. In reality, nothing is more boring than the outcome of an investigation that merely supports the status quo. Young scientists in particular realize that the surest way to get fame and fortune and to advance their ideas is to upset the apple cart, is to disprove an established existing theory. And if I or any other scientist were able to get genuine, solid, important experimental evidence that would overturn the theory of evolution, it would make us famous. It would be an extraordinary thing. I think we can trust the process of science to weed out the bad ideas for the very simple reason is that the process of weeding out bad ideas can bring one fame and fortune and therefore we expect eventually scientists, science to throw out the ideas that don't work. Evolution, despite a century and a half of effort, has withstood that test of time. What the creationists tend to do is search through the scientific literature and pull out little anomalous observations or little anomalous uh, bits from scientific papers and say, see, we told you evolution didn't happen, therefore we're right, therefore special creation happened. And of course, evidence against evolution is not evidence for creationism. Uh, what they claim to be evidence isn't really evidence at all. We can think about the uh, kinds of ideas that are being brought forward by creationists and by uh, intelligent design people. And intelligent design is interesting to me because they are working at a molecular level. So it's taken creationism down to a level that uh, I work at, for example, the level of molecules. And uh, the idea that is being presented there is that certain molecules are so complex that they could not possibly have been produced by uh, evolutionary processes. So, you know, that's an idea. And uh, as a scientist, I look at that idea and I say, well, this is sort of like a judgment call to me. They are judging that these uh, molecules are too complex to have been produced by evolutionary processes. But the judgment is not subject to experimental test. And so as a scientist, I look at that idea, I look at this judgment call on their part that it's too complex, and I say, well, how, how am I going to test that? Now, there is an interesting molecule that I've worked with called the ATP synthase. And this is a molecule that makes energy available to uh, virtually all organisms on the Earth, uh, at least all cellular organisms. Uh, we uh, use a little motor, it's like a little spinning, uh, almost like a little machine, and it can take uh, two molecules and link them together to make a high energy molecule called ATP. And this has been suggested to be an example of something that is too complex to understand. Now the thing about that judgment call is that it ends the process of questioning. You've got your answer. It's too complex. We'll never understand it. And that's not very satisfying to a scientist. We can look at that ATP synthase, as some of my colleagues have, and say, well, 
If that ATP synthase was produced by an evolutionary process, we should see simpler versions of it. We should be able to look back in time and find, by prediction, find things that uh, make sense with respect to what we know about it now. That has been done. We are now looking back in time using uh, the methods of molecular biology. And what we discover is that there were precursor genes to other kinds of enzymes that have now evolved into the uh, ATP synthase. So this is a direct refutation of the intelligent design claim that things are too complex to understand. The fact is, when we try, we can understand them.